and I'm popping like a Kardashian. Huh, pretty and ratchet. Just because someone's narcissistic means that they commit fraud. So just because you dress like that means you're home. No, you're Why this is trivial. No, because she tri Hey guys, it's me, Lani. <laughs> Um, welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time um, coming across my... <sighs> Look, I can't even breathe. <laughs> I just ran up the stairs. But if this is your first time coming across my YouTube channel, then where have you been? You've been missing out, bitch. And if you're a returning subscriber, then I fucks with you heavy. It's really warm today. Fuck, you know. I'm so hot. I wish I could do this naked, but hey, I cannot. So... <laughs> Anyway, basically, I'm gonna like, um, just this is just gonna be like a bit of girly talk. I'm gonna like address a few things that I think need addressing. Um, and it's also good for me to like open up. Actually, let me spit my gum out. Uh, just just like a few, like, um, a few things that I think are important to talk about. So, Obviously, I'm going to start with the ZZ Meals thing. Um, it's really shocking, actually. <sighs> okay, I was really surprised that so many people defended me. Ooh. Only because... I thought... A lot of people disliked me. I mean, it's really difficult because when you are on the other side, when you're on the receiving end. Yeah, sorry, um, the battery died, but basically, oh, it's nice and sunny today. But yeah, I was really surprised that people had my back because I kind of thought like, um, people had a, quite a negative opinion of me because like you know it's really difficult to gauge how people feel about you because you feel like people are constantly getting onto you on twitter um and dragging you on twitter and then also um i've had my own like scandals i mean i've been dragged on twitter so many times i've lost count so it's really difficult to gauge whether people fuck with you or they don't of course some people not everyone's gonna like you I'm very aware of that, but I mean, like, to the extent, like, it's very hard to gauge, like, if you even have that many supporters. Um, so I'm, I'm very grateful for you guys, like, standing out for me. Thank you so much. It just means a lot. Um, I say that to say this, like, Zizi's a lovely person, so this is not any, like, this is not a mal any malice towards her. I would never do that. She's a lovely girl. Um... However, she did obviously, well, maybe it's not obvious, but she did hurt my feelings when she made that comment. Um, I feel like um, she may have not realised the impact of what she was doing. Um, as much as it's just a comment, the thing with me is I have um, experienced quite a lot of... Um, I've experienced quite a lot of being the butt of the jokes or being picked on um, on back chat. There's episodes if you watch it where I'm literally being, at, it's like an ambush, you know? It's like 10 people against one person. And it's, it happened quite a few times and I was like shut down a lot. Basically, in essence, I'm the underdog. Um, very much so. I am definitely the underdog. So when I when ZZ made that comment and ZZ was, you know, in essence like treating me, uh, I guess in, in in a way I felt like she just thought like I was stupid. Um, it just reminded me of um, how I was treated on back chat. Um, however, I just want to move on. I just want us to move on from the ZZ thing because. She clocked that I, my feelings were hurt and she apologised to me after and she had a really nice talk with me. And I think the girl was a lovely girl. I think she's got a good heart. I just kind of think she speaks her mind and, and she's very honest. And I respect that. Um, and no human being is perfect. We all hurt people's feelings sometimes. And we all do things or say things, maybe all oops, 
you know, I, I didn't realize that it would turn out this this way. So I just think we should forgive and forget. Like, um, we have to sometimes give people the benefit of the doubt because not it doesn't mean because someone fucks up that they're like this inherently evil person. And I, I, I think like Ziz is actually a lovely girl. Um, so I want to move on from that. And I appreciate a lot of you lot like defending me and and stuff, but I have chosen to accept her apology. I've also chosen to just believe that it, it was just a comment. You know what I mean? She's just trying to win an argument. And they, it, it's not that deep type of thing, you know? So th that's my stance. Obviously, you guys can do what you want, but I've just told you what I think and take what you will from that. But moving on from that, I just want to say, like, so being Lani isn't that easy. I'm very, very, very misunderstood. Um, people judge me off little clips they've seen. People haven't even really watched me in my entirety. A lot of people haven't even given me a chance to come on my YouTube channel. So people just have a perception of me. And you know what? It's difficult being living in my shoes, but at the same time, I have to be true to myself. So before I went on back chat, I was an Instagram babe I, and I was a inf just an influencer and I had a YouTube channel and I used it sometimes, but really people knew me for taking really sexy pictures and being a baddie. It got to a point where I kind of just thought like it wasn't bringing me any for it wasn't enriching my life. Being a baddie, Instagram baddie wasn't really... Uh, making me feel whole um being superficial and being beautiful only like carries you so far don't get me wrong i love glam i love makeup i love dressing up i love looking pretty and gorgeous and sexy that's that's just me i love pink i love fur i, I love crop tops i love cleavage i love you know what I mean? I'm just like so girly. I'm like kind of like an overgrown princess. Um, so, um, yeah, so when I was um, an Instagram baddie, I just, I just started to feel like, um, I started to see a lot of people on the internet and in general talk about Instagram babes and say that they were, just like, they, like how Instagram girls did make them feel great. Um, didn't make them feel good and they were having like a negative impact on their mental health in addition to that I also heard that people you know mo most people presume that Instagram babes think they're the shit think that they're big-headed or have this like complex it's not really a complex it's just like this this you know I'm better than you type of thing and um I started to clock it when people would DM me and I would respond and then be like oh my god you responded in shock and I couldn't believe that people were shocked that I would respond I went on back chat with 60, 60 to 70 thousand followers I can't remember the exact I can't remember if I was on, what whether I was on 60 or 70 but I went around on back chat with around that number I couldn't believe people were shocked that I that I responded to their messages and I basically really just didn't like the fact that being an Instagram babe made me look like I was one of these girls that was basically superficial on all levels um because I'm superficial to a certain extent but I mean on all levels has no substance and basically is so into my looks and cares about nothing else and thinks I'm better than than other people and just likes the validation of men because a lot of my followers were men you know, I wanted people to know I'm more than my boobs and my ass. actually. Like, I'm, I'm actually kind of funny, you know? Like, I'm kind of, like, goofy. Like, and in terms of me thinking I am hot or I'm badder than other bitches, like, if I'm really honest, like, no, like, I love... I'm a, I'm a girl's girl. I love other females. Um... Like, I'm just not like that. I'm further than... I'm, I'm so far from that. So I wanted to... I wanted to change the narrative. That's why I went on back chat because I was hoping that I could be on a show where I could just show people that I'm lit. I've got a personality. I'm, I can make you laugh. Just I just wanted to show a really different side of me. However, I didn't go on the show with an ego. Like, I actually went on the show thinking I wouldn't get on. I was really shy. I was a bit nervous about my personality, thinking, like, will they like me? 
um and i was really shocked and really honored to get through really really honored to get through um however in the audition process i <laughs> i think i was one of the only people that was humble because a lot of people were in there like kind of like you know walking around kind of like trying to size people up and just being a bit cocky one of the most cocky people no shade like me and him are cool now but one of the most cocky people i met on in the audition process was definitely dc like dc come on dc you thought you were the dog's bollocks <laughs> so um we when we were in the audition room i remember i was really quiet i didn't speak at all like at all like kept completely quiet i saved all my energy until we actually got to debate and um one thing i that i noticed from the minute that we debated to the minute we started filming was that people really really had a perception of me and as much as i can say that it's me sometimes it's you like sometimes it's people projecting what they think i am like rather than just getting to know someone so people assumed i was a bimbo people assumed i had i was an airhead people assumed like some people were even shocked that i have a job like how ridiculous like how do you think i make my money um i'm a model or unless if we're, if we're gonna go on negative stereotypes i sleep with uncles or arab men to make money like people just judge you so much based on the way you look and it's ridiculous so then people found out that i was a really bubbly bubbly girl and i think they thought okay she's just an airhead so i can literally like walk all over this girl i can make a joke of this girl this girl is not a threat so in back chat when we first started i was definitely the underdog million percent hundred million percent the first ever episode we filmed ever 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 young p basically said to me out of nowhere this episode never came out by the way ever it never came out but he just said um i hate girls like you who have no ambition he literally just said it out of nowhere and i looked at him like nigga what do you mean i have no ambition like what the fuck like what i was so shocked that i was the first person on back chat literally cameras have come on first episode we're filming and i'm the first person getting attacked rich niggas or or fuck um rich uncles or whoever i fuck looks after me but i have no ambition i have no brains i don't do shit which could be further from the truth because all my classmates knew what my job was. They all knew I was a senior graphic designer and they all knew where I worked. All of them saw me pulling up in my cars. All of them saw um, the stuff I owned. Like they knew that it was, it was off my own back and off my own merit. But in front of the cameras, they didn't care about the truth. They just wanted to bring out their own perceptions of who I was or what I represented. It's like I was taking the beating on of every Insta babe or Insta thought, if you wanna, if you wanna, if you wanna call it that, like naked girls on Insta, like girls that show their booty and take bikini pictures from time to time, girls who are super sexy from time to time. It was like I was taking a beating for all of them. That's how I actually felt. It was. It didn't matter who I really was. It was like this is who you represent. You're gonna take the L for all these bitches. So he said that. And I ended up throwing a bottle at him, but, you know, the episode just never aired because I just got so upset. And then DC also then randomly brought up that um, I tattooed my ex's name on my vagina. This is the first episode. No one asked him anything. It's almost like to shut me down and make me look stupid. It was like, you're a stupid bitch. You tattooed your ex's name on your vagina. So you should just shut the fuck up. And, and then young P is like, you should kill yourself. You should literally jump off. You jump off a building because... Um, you're just uh you have no ambition you're just one of these bitches like niggas just use you you're just tapped like that's literally the narrative that young p was spinning and um obviously i had dc trying to embarrass me guys it didn't stop there like if i can find if i can find clips of people bullying me i will or yeah i'm gonna use the word bullying i actually don't care i don't owe these people anything but if i can find clips of people picking on me and bullying me i will but yeah so i had young p i had I had DC and it just didn't stop. Um, I continue. Your pussy or to be honest with you, just go and just like bury your head somewhere because that's pathetic. I don't rate that at all. Casino, it doesn't matter if she hasn't got no, no, no food in her fridge because a woman doesn't need to have money. Are you tapped or are you tapped? Are you tapped or are you tapped? Men date down, that's facts. Men date down. So wait, a woman men should now not have no money. Hold on, it's not personal. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Relax on yourself. No one said it was personal, but make it make flipping sense. 
this? Because you got to you anybody. What are you talking about? So I don't care. Because Nino, are you actually saying I'm chatting shit? You are chatting shit. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Let me tell you something for free. There's waitresses. There's waitresses. Your titty is coming out. There's waitresses that are back billing. What are you on about? And then billionaires are fucking bad things. And you're one of them. So what are you talking about? Big man thing, yeah? There's nothing more attractive than a woman that's actually doing something with herself, yeah? Seeing a woman get up in the morning to go to work. to do what? Baby, baby, baby. No, it's true. Why late? Why late? Why late? I'm trying to do what? Why late? I'm trying to do what? 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 Listen, I don't know why this, this Rikishi is coming and running at me, yeah? Like, fam, relax. Relax. It's a simple question. I don't know how it triggered you, why it triggered you. I don't know what you're doing in Dubai. I don't know what Arab is pooing on your face. I ask a simple question, how many times have you been to Dubai? If you've been once, cool. If uncle flew you out twice, cool. The minute Wale said Dubai, I thought about shit. Because that's what everybody thinks about. When you go to Dubai to meet these Arab uncles, you get shitted on. So I thought, are you trying to say that I went to Dubai to get shitted on? Is that what you're saying? Don't do that. Don't make everyone think that I went to Dubai to get shitted on and I'm one of these prostitutes. Thank you. Lonnie and Yasmin are going on like they got that real Marks and Spencers waitress pussy, bruv. But I think they got that little pussy. I think they got that petrol station sandwich pussy, bruv. What do you mean? Why am I not genuine? I'm not genuine. Hold on. You just wait. Wait, wait. You just, you open your mouth. You're st to, you're, you open your mouth to say. Stop calling me stupid. Stop calling me stupid. You are about to say stupid, though. You open your mouth. You are about to say stupid. You open your mouth to say, I don't want to settle down by my children. Are you mad? Yeah. So what do you had people like gunning for me. Um, boys and girls. Definitely girls. A lot of the girls rolled their eyes to the things I said. They gave me dirty looks. They just thought, like, like Lani shut the fuck up, basically. Like, they all just thought I was a weirdo. Um, and it was just really difficult because I always thought, but I'm speaking sense. It's just because it's coming from me. I remember one time I was super offended by DC because we were basically talking about body count. And I basically said that I do care if a guy has slept with loads of girls. I never said I'd reject a guy if he slept with, um loads of girls but it would bother me if i found out that my a guy I was talking to had moved to you know the whole hood my best friend my cousin my i, I just feel like you, you everyone wants someone that's a little bit exclusive like i'm not unrealistic but when a guy has literally been in your friends dms your other friends dms it's just like he's he's just thirsty for everyone and I think the reason he judged me and was trying to put me down is because he was just like, oh, please, like, you definitely have a high body count. And it was like, you don't know me. And that's something that really bothered me as uh, because it was just like, shut the fuck up. I'm just talking. You don't know me. You're literally judging me based on what you see or what you want to believe. Like, if people really, like, obviously, like, it was just a show, so it's very difficult for people to get to know who you really are. But if people actually, like, bother to ever ask, I'm somebody who's had a lot of trauma um, in dating, especially with one particular person. I'm not going to say with all the guys because they weren't that bad, but one guy I dated, I have a really bad trauma with him. Like, he just broke me and broke my heart into like a million pieces this happened four years ago but for some reason it's just something that i i still struggle with and it's affected how i date so because of how i mean i love this boy so much like he was a, like, the love of my life and he like just <sighs> sorry I don't want to get upset because I'm going out. I'm going out. Sorry. Um. So basically, like, get together, get together. Basically, four years ago, um, I dated this guy who was like the love of my life, and. He, he, I, okay, so I have never dated someone and just believed that they were my soulmate the way I believed he was. I thought he was my soulmate, my other half. I kind of felt like I was put on this planet to be with him. 
Oh, sorry. Oh, my throat. I thought I was on this planet to be with him. And it just didn't go very well. Um, I'll, I'll put it down to being um, young and just the really dumb th things. There's loads of things that I regret as well because, like, I just wish, like, I wish that I just maybe, like, cherish more the time we had together and also didn't listen to the noise because a lot of people had opinions on our union and I let some of their opinions affect me, like, anyway this is not about him this is the point is i got heartbroken really bad some bad stuff happened during that relationship that really hurt me and it affects me to this day even though it was four years ago so because of that i just i just i just don't have time to like bullshit like with guys i just i just i, I couldn't care less about like for instance having sex i just couldn't care less i don't really know what i'm doing actually i, I guess in, in, in a way i'm just kind of waiting for um god to help me figure it out um because of how i met him i met him so randomly um i met him through a, some one of some guy i knew basically said my friend fancies you and i was like okay whatever and he was like no nah, he fancies you and then one day I was bored. Imagine I was bored. And he was like, let's go, let's go out to eat. I went out on a date and I swear to God, that was it. I was fucking in love with him. He was amazing. Like, it wasn't just him. I just never felt so connected to someone in my entire life. Sorry, I don't even want to, like, I do have to move on because this is just so moist, everything I'm saying. But um, this, because that ended and the way I lost him and also the way he treated me after and i just thought like what was that ever real i just got, i was just so hurt i just i've never loved anyone like that like i loved him more than i loved myself like i would do anything for that guy i would have gone i would have gone to jail for him like so when someone is so now i'm on back chat let's bring it back to back chat and someone's trying to pay me out like you're out here or like you're a hoe please you don't care about body count like niggas fuck you like it's like you don't know me like you don't know what i've been through you don't know my lifestyle you just don't know people like you just really don't so like that really hurt me and just i was just so pissed off but in general on bat chat i felt like a lot of the castmates um were just really super judgmental they were always acting like i was the most tapped he was acting like Lani you're tapped or sorry sorry Lani like someone could say that you're a hoe because of the way you dress like in a way like I handled it like that because it's like I'm just used I'm used to it guys like as sad as it is I'm just used to people chatting shit to me <laughs> I'm used to people just chatting shit I'm used to it um um how do we what, what, what? I'm trying to think of who else I can talk about who I felt was a little bit mean to me um the thing is with the girls the reason it's difficult for me to name names is because i'm so friendly with them now they're so nice to me but i will say most of the girls like did stuff that was kind of nasty not nasty but they kind of did make me feel a type of way the only person that had my back was basically yasmin yasmin actually was one of the reasons people gave me respect. I want to say something. A lot of people said that people treated me that way because what some people think, oh, because of the way I dressed. Excuse me, Yasmin and Reva w were half butt ass naked. There was one time Reva was just literally wearing stockings, mate. Like, no one could tell Reva nothing. People respect her because she's Reva. Like, she's just a bad bitch. Like, Reva is such a cool down to earth, earth bitch. She just Reva, like no one's gonna disrespect her. She's so sick as a human being. Um, and no one's gonna disrespect Yasmin either. Like Yasmin was just like a bad bitch. Like she was a boss, like she, like no one's gonna disrespect her. So I don't know with me, I was like the princess and like I was the punching bag. Um, yeah, but yeah, the girls, like even I'm really cool with them now. So I'm, I, I wanna just emphasize I'm so cool with them now. But I did think Nina, she even admitted to me that she didn't really warm to me at first. So she might have been making like looks, you know, like when the camera was on her, she might have been like, <laughs> and whatever. Um, Sylvia, Defo, and um, even Catherine, like 
even Tara, like basically the all the new girls. I mean, I think even um, Esther um, was funny with me the first ever episode. Esther warmed to me as the season went on because she got to know me. But she had a very, very... Esther, Esther's story is a little bit different because she had a very negative opinion of me because she knew somebody who kind of told her very... F they just told her false information about me. I don't want to get into it because it's quite personal, but there's a reason they told her that and um she she gave me a chance and eventually she found out that i was actually just a really nice girl like i'm down to earth like i don't want to hurt anyone i don't want to um get in anyone's way and she she, she she's so lovely she's such a lovely girl like esther is such a lovely girl so lovely i honestly that woman does i swear to god this is just a random rant esther deserves all the happiness in the world she deserves like she deserves real love from a real man and and just every happiness in the world she's such a darling she really looks after people and obviously like obviously i have to really also be grateful to yaz because if it wasn't for yaz a lot of people probably wouldn't have had any respect for me they only showed me respect because yaz they were kind of cool with yasmin because yasmin was like uh, uh, uh. so but for the most part people just thought i was a joke um, I was just this Barbie and I was the underdog. I was definitely the underdog. Oh my god. And guys, it, you know, I used to, after filming, I used to feel so drained because people were going in their confessionals telling people I was a prostitute when they damn well know I'm a graphic designer. I have no ambition when I, like, nigga, I earn more money than you. Like, you, and you know this. Um, people were just going in, in confessionals. One time, I think DC, um, we actually fell out and I, I blocked him. It's because he called me an estate slag. He was trying to insinuate that I, I go on an estate and I, I guess I hoe out. Um, who knows, I suck dick or I, um, I have sex with all these men or something. Like, that's what he was trying to insinuate. And that just really, like bothered me because it was like the audience doesn't know me at all they don't know who i am at all they're getting to know me and you're helping them get to know me by painting a perception that i'm basically a slag prostitute like it's just it's not nice also you have to remember guys like i was on the show first episode comes out my fucking loot nudes started circulating before you lot saw it i already i it'd been circulating for like a month or two weeks or three weeks something a while so I was just dealing, and then I was dealing with the internet calling me tapped. It was a lot, like when it came out, and also um, the group. Even like in the, we have a group chat, and when I used to speak, like just no one respected me. Let me give you a very small example of some of something to show that I just wasn't rated in the group. Um, there is, um, I even forget her name, Terrell. Terrell, she's the trans, the trans. She as an artist and she draws pictures so she drew everyone's pictures and she kind of i feel like she went in order of the people that she rated so she she was she was kind of drawing all the people that were like relevant i guess this is before you guys had seen it this is like during filming stages and she used to send pictures in the group so i think the first person she ever drew was esther because esther's the og she drew, she drew esther she definitely drew yasmin because yasmin is that girl she drew like DC. She just basically drew all the people that she thought was, were, but but because you know, people DC was definitely like like this behind the scenes. He was like, I'm that guy kind of thing. So she definitely drew all the people that she rated. She did not draw draw me. So that's an example of that's that's a small example, but it's just to show you the perception. Like like my my castmates didn't rate me. Like they just thought I was a silly girl. And I just, just don't think that they thought I was going to be anything. They definitely didn't think I was going to be a favourite. They very mu much underestimated me and I was definitely the underdog. But when the show came out, my Jesus, my God was on my side. He, um... God works in mysterious ways, bro. Like, even though I got a lot of hate, I got so much love. I got such a solid support system like i'm so grateful like i'm not somebody who has like a million supporters but the supporters i do have i'm just so grateful for them so grateful for them they always have my back always and the thing that makes touches me the most is that they they get me you, do you know what i mean they get me they like see my soul 
and they want me to win and I just I just love my supporters so much I'm so grateful for you guys and um and that was well doing the hot desk show which I'm so grateful for I'm like the whole back chat like um crew like Andy and Zoe I just love them so much like the fact that they put me on hot desk like there's a new show with, with um like Zizi and Nazraya Lucas and Charlie like I'm just so blessed and so grateful to be on it because who knew that after back chat I would still have be in front of the camera talking shit and people would be laughing like I genuinely it's, it might sound dumb but I'm just so grateful that to have that platform I was I never believed for a second that it would be me out of everyone I never thought it would be me I'm not one of these people that just is gassed you know what I mean? It's just like, wow, God actually works in mysterious ways. And that's why sometimes as, as upset as I am, even like with my little trauma and stuff, I just think like, hang in there, Lani, because God works in mysterious ways. Like, and God, one day you're going to wake up and think, oh my God, God, you've given me everything I've asked for. So yeah, he will like... It sounds really stupid, but you have to live in hope. So I just know one day I'll turn around and think, raw like, fam, like, I've achieved everything I want. Don't get me wrong, I sound like I'm sad. I'm not, I'm a really happy person. But I'm a really, really happy person, but there's so much that I want to, like, achieve for myself. And... You, you know, I mean, you want to make yourself proud. Like, you want to do stuff for yourself, like, in your life. You know, one of those things is, for instance, just having a child. Like, I can't wait to be a mum. I can't... Um, I have a really good career outside of, like, the camera. Like, my actual graphics career is sick. Even that, like, God really blessed me. Like, it was really difficult to get to where I am t today as a graphic designer. It was really difficult. Really difficult. Like, I went through depression at one point because I just, I felt shit about my career. But that's been patterned. I'm so happy where, I'm so happy with where I am in my graphics career. Like, to be honest, anything now is a bonus. I'm so happy. I'm so blessed. I love the company I work for i i just i i'm in terms of my actual graphics career everything is patent i am happy there's other things that i want to get i want to get there with i'm very happy I, i'm very blessed and happy with i accept myself for who i am i like the way i look so there's areas that i'm i'm happy and fulfilled in but i think there's always those little things that you think you know what until i've got um maybe the family that i want like you know Sorry, I will one day be like, rah, I am here, rah, like, I'm happy with where I am. I'm happy with where my YouTube has come, I'm content. Anyway, guys, I'm really sorry. It's just like, it was a really d hard day for me to film this video because I'm just like, it's just one of those days. I'm not having the best day, if I'm really honest. It's just one of those days, guys, you know what I mean? Um, but we have to pull through, you have to keep going on in life, on and on and on. But I just, um, hope that this story, or me talking, can help one of you guys, especially if you are someone that doesn't, if you feel like a loser sometimes, laugh at you, if people doubt you, if people underestimate you, if you're the underdog, if you're, just, if any of those things if you feel any of those things just know god has got you and you're gonna come out shining on top winning on top just know you will guys but anyway guys oh that was so intense i'm so i was really dreading doing this because i knew it was going to be intense combo but thank you so much for watching please like share subscribe what's the other stuff like share subscribe give it a thumbs up give it a like i need to take this wig off it's so tight i'm gonna put a black one on it's so tight but yeah i love you guys until my next video my next video will probably be something light-hearted though like fuck this shit i'm gonna bring some boys on my channel i know you guys are thirsty and you want some niggas don't worry i got you I got you. I got so many niggas that want to come on my channel. I'm going to bring you so much mandem. In fact, in the comments below, tell me what you guys want to know from the mandem, what you want to see me do, what you got, games you want to see me play. I'm going to have so much man for you. Chocolate City. Chocolate City. And if you don't know any white boys that want to come on, I don't mind having also white, some white chocolate. 
darlings, don't you worry. If I can get them to get their shirts off for you, shirts off everything. Anyway, guys, I love you lots. And see you in my next video. Oh, oh, bye. <laughs>